Thanks for dropping by for my daily devotions for March the 6th, 2023. I always love the scripture, <clears throat> Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him, and he'll make your path straight. Take that to heart today, and you live it, and you'll be blessed big time. Today, we're going to look at uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 1, Matthew chapter 10, Psalm 104, <laughs> and Jeremiah chapter 33. Let's pray. Father, thank you for being our God. Thank you for being involved in our life. Thank you for the, your willingness to speak to us every day in your word. And I pray that you do exactly that today. Apply it to our hearts with the power of the Holy Spirit. Make us new because we heard from you. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Second Corinthians chapter 1. Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus, by the will of God and Timothy, our brother, to the church of God in Corinth, together with all the saints throughout Achaia, grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of compassion and the God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our troubles so that we can comfort those in any trouble with the comfort we ourselves have been comforted, we have received from Christ, from God. For just as the suffering of Christ flows over into our lives, so also through Christ our comfort overflows. If we are distressed, it is for your comfort and salvation. If we are comforted, it is for your comfort, which produces in you patient endurance of the same suffering we suffer. And our hope for you is firm, because we know that just as you share in our suffering, so also you share in our comfort. We do not want you to be uninformed, brothers, about the hardships we suffered in the province of Asia. We were under great pressure, far beyond our ability to endure, so that we despaired of even of, of life. Indeed, in our hearts we felt a sentence of death, but this happened that we might not rely on ourselves, but on God who raises the dead. Always, always remember that. Bad times come, so you have to de de rely on God who raises the dead. He has delivered us from such a deadly peril, and we will, and he will deliver us. On him we have set our hope, and he will continue to deliver us. As you help us by your prayers, then many will give thanks on your behalf to the gracious favor granted us in answer to the prayers of many. Now, this is our boast. Our conscience testifies that we have conducted ourselves in the world, and especially in our relations with you, in the holiness and sincerity that are from God. We have done so according to the worldly wisdom, but not according to the worldly wisdom, but according to God's grace. For we do not write you anything that cannot that you cannot read or understand. And I hope that as you understood us in part, you will come to understand fully that you can boast of us just as we will boast of you in the day of the Lord Jesus. Because I was confident of this. I planned to visit you first so that you might benefit twice. I planned to visit you on my way to Macedonia and to come back to you, uh, come back to you from Macedonia and then to have you send me on my way to Judea. When I planned this, did I, did I do it lightly? Or do I make my plans in a worldly manner so that in the same breath I say yes, yes, and no, no? But as surely as God is faithful. Our message to you is yes and is not yes and no, for the Son of God, Jesus Christ, who was preached among you by me and Silas and Timothy, was not yes and no, but in him it's always been yes. For no matter how many promises God has made, they are yes in Christ. And so through him, the amen is spoken by us to the glory of God. Now it is God who makes both us and you stand firm in Christ. He anointed us, set his seal of ownership on us, and put his spirit in our hearts as a deposit guaranteeing what is to come. I call to God as my witness, I call God as my witness that it was in order to spare you that I did not return to Corinth, not that we lord it over your faith, but that we work with you for your joy because it is by faith you stand firm. That's a great chapter. And then Matthew chapter 10. He called his 12 disciples to him and gave them authority to drive out evil spirits and to heal every disease and sickness. These are the names of the 12 apostles. First, Simon, who is called Peter, 
and his brother Andrew, James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John, Philip and Bartholomew, Thomas and Matthew, and the tax collector, James, son of Alphaeus, and Thaddeus, Simon the Zealot, and Judas Iscariot, who betrayed him. These twelve Jesus sent out with the following instructions. Do not go among the Gentiles or enter the town, any town of the Samaritans. Go rather to the lost sheep of Israel. As you go, preach this message. The kingdom of heaven is near. Heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse those who have leprosy, drive out demons. Freely you have received, freely give. Do not take along any gold or silver or copper in your belts. Take no bag for your journey or extra tunic or sandals or a staff. For the worker is worthy of his is worth his keep. Whatever town or village you enter, search for some worthy person there and stay in that house until you leave. As you enter the home, give it your greeting. If the home is deserving, let your peace rest on it. If it is not, let your peace return to you. If anyone will not welcome you or listen to your words, shake the dust off your feet when you leave that home or town. I tell you the truth, it will be more bearable for Sodom and Gomorrah on the day of judgment than for that town. I'm sending you out like sheep among wolves. Therefore, be shrewd as snakes and innocent as doves. Be on your guard against men. They will hand you over to the local councils and flog you in the synagogues. On my account, you will be brought before governors and kings as witnesses to them and to the Gentiles. But when they arrest you, do not worry about what to say or how to say it. At that time, you will be given what to say, for it will be for it will not be you speaking, but the spirit of your father speaking through you. Brother will betray brother to death and father his child. Children will rebel against their parents and have them put to death. All men will hate you because of me, but he who stands firm to the end will be saved. When you are persecuted in one place, flee to another. I tell you the truth, you will not finish going through the cities of Israel before the Son of Man comes. A student is not above his teacher, nor is a servant above his master. It is enough for the student to be like his teacher and the servant like his master. If the head of the house had been called Beelzebub, how much more the members of his household. So do not be afraid of them. There is nothing concealed that will not be disclosed or hidden that will not be made known. What I tell you in the dark, speak in the daylight. What is, what is whispered in your ear, proclaim from the roofs. Do not be afraid of those who kill the body but cannot kill the soul. Rather, be afraid of the one who can destroy both body and soul in hell. Are not two sparrows sold for a penny? Yet not one of them will fall to the ground apart from the will of your father. And even the very hairs of your head are all numbered. So don't be afraid. You are worth more than many sparrows. Whoever acknowledges me before men, I will also acknowledge him before my Father in heaven. Confess Jesus. Acknowledge him before people. He's going to do the same for you. In kind, he will respond, okay? But whoever disowns me before men, I will disown him before my Father in heaven. Do not suppose that I have come to bring peace on the earth. I did not come to bring peace, but a sword. For I have come to turn a man against his father, a daughter against her mother, a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. A man's enemies will be the members of his own household. Anyone who loves his father and mother more than me is not worthy of me. Anyone who loves his son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And anyone who does not take his cross and follow me is not worthy of me. Whoever finds his life will lose it. Whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. The point, sell out to Jesus. New, number one, numero in uno, Jesus. He who, he who receives you receives me, and he who receives me receives the one who sent me. Anyone who receives a prophet because he is a prophet will receive a prophet's reward. And anyone who receives a righteous man because he is righteous, because he's a righteous man, will receive a righteous man's reward. And if anyone gives you a cup, even a cup of cold water, to one of these little ones because he is my disciple, I tell you the truth, he will certainly not lose his reward. Psalm 104. Praise the Lord, O my soul. O Lord, my God, you are very great. You are clothed with splendor and majesty. He wraps himself in light as with a garment. He stretches out, his, out the heavens like a tent and lays the beams of his upper chambers in, on their waters. He makes clouds his chariots and rides on the wings of the wind. He makes winds his messenger, flames of fire his servants. He set the earth on its foundations. It can never be moved. Remember that. It can't be moved until he moves it. You covered it with the deep as with a garment. The waters stood above the mountains. 
But at your rebuke, the waters fled. At the sound of your thunder, they, they took to flight. They flowed over the mountains and went down into the valleys to the place you assigned to them. Talk about the great flood. You set a boundary they cannot cross. Never again will they cover the earth. He makes springs pour water into the ravines. It flows between the mountains. They give water to the beasts of the field. The wild, wild donkeys quench their thirst. The birds of the air nest by the waters. They sing among the branches. He waters the mountains with his upper chambers, and the earth is satisfied by the fruit of his work. He makes grass grow for the cattle and plants for man to, and plants for man to cultivate, bringing forth food from the earth. Wine that gladdens the heart of man, oil to make his face shine, and bread that sustains his heart. The trees of the Lord are well watered, the cedars of Lebanon that he planted. There the birds make their nests. The stork has its home in the pine trees. <clears throat> the high mountains belong to the wild goats. The crags are a refuge for the conies. The moon marks off the seasons. The sun knows when, when to go down. You bring darkness, it becomes night. All the beasts of the forest prowl. The lions roar <clears throat> for their prey and seek their food from God. The sun rises, they steal away. They return and lie down in their dens. Then man goes out to his work, to his labor until evening. How many are, you, are your works, O Lord? In wisdom you made them all. The earth is full of your creatures. There is the sea, vast and spacious, teeming with creatures beyond number, living things both large and small. There the ships go to and fro, and the Leviathan, which you formed to frolic there. These all look to you to give them their food at the proper time. When you give it to them, they gather it up, and when you open their hands, they are satisfied with good things. When you hide your face, they are terrified. When you take away their breath, they die and return to the dust. When you send your spirit, they are created, and you renew the face of the earth. May the glory of the Lord endure forever. May the Lord rejoice at his works. He who looks at the earth and it trembles, who touches the mountains and they smoke. I will sing to the Lord all my life. I will sing praise to my God as long as I live. May my meditation be pleasing to him as I rejoice in the Lord. But may sinners vanish from the earth and the wicked be no more. Praise the Lord, O my soul. Praise the Lord. And then Jeremiah chapter 33. The prophet Jeremiah. You know what we named our son almost 46 years ago? Jeremiah Daniel. And uh, that's the kind of guy he is. Pick names that have meaning. You know, biblical names. I love that. When Jeremiah was still confined in the courtyard of the guard, the word of the Lord came to him a second time. This is what the Lord says. He who made the earth, the Lord who formed it and established it, the Lord is his name. Call to me and I will answer you and tell you the great and unsearchable things you do not know. For this is what the Lord, the God of Israel, says about the houses of, in, his, in this city and the royal palaces of Judah that have been torn down to be used against the siege ramps and the sword in the, in the flight of the Babylonians. They will be filled with dead bodies of men, will slay in my anger and wrath. I will hide my face from this city because of its, all its wickedness. Nevertheless, I will bring health and healing to it. I will heal my people and I will let them enjoy abundant peace and security. I will bring Judah and Israel back from cap captivity and will re rebuild them as they were before. I will cleanse them from all their sin that they have committed against me and will forgive their sins of rebellion against me. And this city will bring me renown, joy, praise, and honor before all nations on the earth and that hear all the good things that I do for it. And they will be in awe and I will tremble at the abundant prosperity and peace I provide for it. This is what the Lord says. You, see, you say about this place, it is desolate waste without men or animals. Yet in the towns of Judah and the streets of Jerusalem that are deserted, inhabited by neither men nor animals, there will be, they will be heard once more. The sounds of joy and gladness, the voices of the bride and the bridegroom, the voices of those who bring thank offerings to the house of the Lord, saying, Give thanks to the Lord Almighty, for the Lord is good. The, his love endures forever. Nor... Will I restore the fortune? For I res will restore the fortunes of the land as they were before, says the Lord. This is what the Lord Almighty says: In this place, desolate and without men or animals, in all its towns, there will again be pastures for shepherds to rest their flocks. 
in the towns of the hill country or the, or the western foothills of the Negev in the territory of Benjamin and the villages around Jerusalem and in the towns of Judah, flocks will again pass under the hand of the one who counts them, says the Lord. The days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will fulfill the gracious promise I made to the house of Israel and to the house of Judah. In those days and at that time, I will make a righteous branch sprout from David's line. I will do what is just and right in the, in the land. In those days, Judah will be saved and Jerusalem will live in safety. This is the name by which it will be called the Lord our righteousness. Talking about Jesus there. And uh, wow, amazing. For this is what the Lord says. David will never fail to have a man sit on the throne of the house of Israel, nor will the priests <clears throat> or Levites ever fail to have a man to stand before me continually to offer burnt offerings or to burn grain offerings and to present sacrifices. The word of the Lord came to Jeremiah. This is what the Lord says. If you can break my covenant with the day with with the day and my covenant with the night, so that day and night no longer come at their appointed time, then my covenant with David, my servant, and my covenant with the Levites who are priests ministering before me can be broken, and David will no longer be a descendant to reign on the throne. I will make the descendants of David my servant, and the Levites who minister before me as countless as the stars of the sky and the measureless as the sand of the sea. The word of the Lord came to Jeremiah. Have you not noticed that these people, what these people are, that these people are saying, the Lord has rejected the two kingdoms he chose. So they despise my people and no longer regard them as a nation. This is what the Lord says. If you had not established my covenant with day and night and fixed laws of heaven and earth, then I will reject the descendants of Jacob and David, my servant, and I will not choose one of his sons to rule over the descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, for I will restore their fortunes and have compassion on them. Wow. Let's pray. Father, bless this day with power and grace. Thanks for speaking to us. Change our lives from the inside out by the truth we find in your word. We pray it all in the strong name of Jesus, the Lord. Amen. Have a great day.